Ciao a tutti! Benvenuti alla settimana 4. Welcome to week 4. Last week we saw that Italian nouns have gender and as such are either masculine or feminine. In this example we have la casa, a feminine article and a feminine noun, and il libro, a masculine article introducing a masculine noun. We learned that the article indicated gender and had to agree with the noun. We also learned how to make nouns and their corresponding articles plural. In this case, la casa in the plural becomes le case, and il libro in the plural becomes i libri. This week we will begin to explore adjectives in Italian. This is where things start to get interesting. Instead of just saying what there is or isn't, c'è un bel mare, in the case of the picture with the houses, non c'è un bambino, or ci sono libri, in our picture of books, non ci sono persone, we can now begin to describe ourselves, others, and the places and items in our world with more detail. In this picture, c'è uno studente alto e bruno con gli occhi castani. There is a student who is tall, brown-haired, and brown-eyed. Another example, ci sono dei bambini furbi, divertenti, e troppo intelligenti. There are witty or um, furbi, it's like uh, clever, clever, fun, and very smart kids. Similar to noun article agreement, adjectives also have to, to agree with the nouns they modify, in both number, plural or singular, and gender, masculine or feminine. Notice in this example, bambini, which is plural, is followed by the adjectives furbi, divertenti, and intelligenti, all ending in e, like bambini, to indicate that they are plural and masculine. Here are some other examples. C'è una casa rossa. C'è un libro giallo. Ci sono molte case strane. Ci sono tanti libri interessanti. Notice that the article, noun, and adjective all agree in number and gender. For example, una, feminine singular article, casa, feminine singular noun, rosa, feminine singular adjective. And the same goes for all examples. Notice also the position of the adjective. It generally comes after the noun. Here in our first example, rosa, the adjective comes at the very end of the sentence, unlike in English. Italian tends to be a sexist language. When describing several different nouns, one feminine and one masculine, the adjective will become plural and masculine. Notice our examples. Giancarlo è sfortunato. Singular masculine subject, Giancarlo. Singular masculine adjective, sfortunato, unlucky. Maria Grazia es fortunata. Maria Grazia is our singular feminine subject and it, the adjective sfortunata is feminine and singular. But Giancarlo and Maria Grazia sono sfortunati. In this case, the, the adjective is switched to the masculine plural even though Maria Grazia is a feminine subject, but having another masculine subject in the same sentence, the whole sentence reverts to masculine. As I said, tends to be a sexist language. While adjectives are generally placed after the noun in Italian, we will now look at some special adjectives in this chapter that precede the noun instead. This list of, of adjectives will usually come before nouns. Bello, piccolo, brutto, stesso, buono, nuovo, bravo, altro, cattivo, caro, giovane, vero, vecchio, primo, grande, ultimo. Here we have some examples of bello, buono, and vecchio preceding the noun. Un bel gatto, un buon caffè, un vecchio signore. Notice the placement of the adjective is the exception instead of coming behind the, the noun in these special cases with this special list, it comes before the noun. That said, un bel gatto, from our example, 
would be stated as just that. But when you're going to add modifiers like molto, abbastanza, un po', at that point it moves to the end again. Un gatto molto bello, un caffè abbastanza buona, un signore un po' vecchio. Our Italian world is about to get more colorful. On page 44 of our text Salve, we learn the colors. Notice that rosa, blue, and viola, and marrone are invariable. This means they will not change their form ever, and they say they stay the same regardless of the gender and number of the nouns they are modifying. Let's look at an example with rosa. Una pantera rosa. In this case, we have pantera, which is a singular feminine subject, so it is logical that rosa would take the sim singular feminine form as the adjective. But we also have un cello rosa. In this case, cello, the sky, is a masculine subject, but notice that the adjective is still rosa. And in our example of flowers, tanti fiori rosa, we have a plural uh, subject, but rosa is still invariable. So for these four colors, it never changes. They always stay in their exact form. So last chapter, you learned that the indefinite article un changes according to the noun it precedes. It, it, before consonants, it takes one form, before vowels, another, before z, another, and before s, another. And it also changes depending on whether it is introducing a feminine or masculine noun. So when buono comes before a noun, it follows these same general ending rules. For example, un libro becomes un buon libro. Una casa becomes una buona casa. Those are, those are your standards. There's no uh, nothing unusual about those. But however, remember that before vowels, like in the case of un amico, in the feminine form, the A from una drops off and is replaced by the apostrophe. So that would follow if you were describing una buona amica, that A would drop off. But notice that the article una reverts back to its standard form. And you can notice the same pattern before Z's. Uno zo, when it becomes, when it's modified by buono, the f buono comes before zo, but un reverts back to its standard form. The adjective bello follows a similar pattern. When preceding nouns, it uses the same variety of endings we learned for the article il to create bel, bei, bel apostrophe, bella, degli, belle, and bello. Let's look at some examples. Il libro becomes il bel libro, and that L on bel is modeled after il. I libri becomes due bei libri. So now that I ending from I is what follows the be from bello. L'ospedale, when it has the bel modifier, it uses the apostrophe just like it would if, if there was no bel modifying. Li ospedale, due belli ospedali. So that li is sort of tacked on to the be of bello. Um, and the same goes all the way down the line. I hope this presentation will help you understand this week's grammar and have a fabulous week. Ci vediamo molto presto. Buona settimana a tutti.